Hello. Oh, look at the cat. Look at the focus systems. Are we set to go? Focus systems? Hello. You can focus, right? Hey. Check out my eyeballs. Yeah, it doesn't want to focus today. It's so random. Some 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 streams just wants it'll focus every freaking time. Hey, welcome to today's Tuesday stream. It's gonna be pretty much a standard stream today. Look at that cat. There it is. A standard stream today with typical sort of focus problems, and uh, which should get better over time. Couple new things. Uh, I'm, tomorrow's stream should be very interesting. We won't be even using this camera because we're going to stream back in the studio for the music segment. We'll be Flight Simulator, and then we're going to stream in the music studio. And it's going to be either magical or horrible or some mixture of the both. Uh, and I'm going to try to explain what everything is and how everything works and how much time I put into everything and how, and maybe it's, it's probably going to have to be several streams because I can't do it all in, a, in an hour or two. That's for sure. Uh, but we're just, it's an experiment. We're going to see how it's go, how it goes. Um, getting all the camera sources ready and, uh, you know, I'm kind of excited about it and that's tomorrow. Yay. But today it's going to be a pretty much a regular st a stream. And then the day after that, uh, it'll be a guitar stream, and then the day after that, we'll, we'll do another Christmas music stream. So I've got all these things kind of planned out in advance for the next several days, but nothing that amazing, and nothing that will stray too far from the formula, which, of course, is we're going to fly somewhere in a plane. And uh, as uh, some of you probably know, if you've heard, uh, last weekend I got the Prime Deluxe Upgrade, which comes with 10 new planes to Microsoft Flight Simulator. In fact, it's basically a package. It doesn't give you any particular functionality, but it's a package with some planes. Uh, and because specifically I like flying planes that I haven't flown before, it's a good, it's a value, it's a good value for me. And it gives me content, so it lets me fly. Oh, the cat's in already. Okay, that's fine. Um, the towel's there so he can wipe his feet off on it, by the way. Yeah, I probably should move that. So we've got to pick a place. Don't want to take too long. You know, it could be anywhere in the world that's, you know, well lit up. Although I do want to see some of these new airports. Which are the airports? I want to see. Hold on a second. I know it's it's on the same site here. Okay, Amsterdam, Cairo, Cape Town, O'Hare, Chicago. Uh Madrid, Spain. Denver, we went to. Dubai. Frankfurt, Heathrow, San Francisco International, which I think we went to, but maybe not. What of those sounds good? Hmm. Dubai International Airport. I mean, it's going to be nighttime there, but we can change the time, you know. We can, we can make it daylight. Got to think about that. What about the? What do we have that's in daytime? We have O'Hare, and I think they. I think it's pretty cloudy. Uh, but do we care about clouds? No. This is just a new airport. Well, not a new airport, but a new model. So the 152 Aerobat is the next plane we have in the list. There's 10 planes. Um, what am I doing here? And 10, uh, 10 additional uh, uh, aircraft. And this is one of them. So we're checking off the list, the 152 Aerobat. Nice. And it does come in these really wild uh, liveries. Well, no, I take it back. It comes in this one really wild livery, and then these are totally normal. Um, so we're going to try the wild one. All right. And because it's the very first time we've ever flown in this plane, so like a medium, we're going to take off off the ramp, meaning on a cold plane that we have to start up. we got to get it going. Oh, wait, I forgot to turn the game on. Game. There we go. Game with Cam. You know, this way you can see what I'm doing. By the way, I had the globe up and we picked the, uh, I'll show you the livery, right? You can see anything. And we picked the uh, O'Hare because it's on the list of the 10 airports that I recently got as of this weekend with the upgrade package. 
Uh, also, yeah, I need to check my audio levels here. Yeah, always does that. That's better. So the exciting thing is that I figured out how to use my iPad. I had to pay, eight, you have to buy an app for $8. Um, but I think it seems like a one-time purchase, but now I can use my iPad as a pretty decent camera. Uh, so that it's wireless, it's a decent wireless camera. So I can move my, um, I can use that as one of my sources. Cause I was, I really don't have, uh, well, you know, range for much. Although I think I can put up one camera here using an extender, USB extender as, as kind of a overall camera. And then I can use my iPad as a close up, So you can actually see what's going on, which might be really cool. I'm just thinking it's going to be really cool, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, it's all going to be an interesting experiment tomorrow after the flight simulator section, of course. All right. As we predicted, oh, by the way, if there's a, a lot of noise coming, it's because every Tuesday there's the guy with the air horn walk, who literally walks right by my window there and the, the air blower. Um, I believe it's, you know, it's overcast and it's late in the afternoon. It's like, what, 3 p.m. there, 3.30, or is it 4 p.m. in Chicago? It might be 3 p.m. I think it's 3 p.m. Um, but primarily that's overcast. So we're going to try to see if we can fly up and see the sun in this cool plane, which says what on it? It says, uh, shit, what the fuck does it say? It says, woo, ah, all right. And then it says, Kench, zoom, all right. It's like a, it's like one of the, that that Lichtenstein dude I think they're trying to go for or something. That that cartoon or uh, start I, I, it's great. I think that works. I again I don't I don't think it's a real plane that actually looks like that. That's in service because you know these planes get you know it takes a lot of work to keep them clean you know, to do this in the first place. So but maybe who knows? But in a, in the virtual world, okay this. Uh, looks pretty darn familiar to me, but we do have to figure out where, okay, the mixture's at 100, where the on-offs are, they're not there. Airflow, is it down below? Ah, oh, it's here. Uh, right. So, alternator and battery master go on. Uh, we're gonna turn on the cabin lighting. Navigation lights, strobe lights, and beacon lights, taxi lights, leap landing lights off. Uh, they need us to both, but I think there's a, a, a fuel. Okay, mixture is 100% throttle at about 10% for, take for that. Uh, we don't need, I don't know if it has a uh, propeller. Airflow. Is there a question? Is there a like a valve on the top here that you have to open that uh, allows the fuel to flow? I don't see. As again, some have a um, some of these planes have. Oh, does this work? Yeah, it doesn't. Most of these, most of these single it does not work. Uh, some planes have a fuel cutoff that's in the engine that's in case of fire. Here, we're gonna turn off the yoke, this little thing here, which doesn't have anything on it. I want to see. Okay, the magneto. Primer, parking brake is on. Oh, yeah, we want that on. Good. Oh, yeah, here we go. Fuel. I always forget it because it's dark, but there's a fuel valve here. Or is it? Where is it? It's on the floor. Can we see it from here? That's going to be a problem. We can't look. Right. Fuel valve is off. Fuel valve, I think you have to have that be on. Let's just find out. The engine started up, but the what the, the uh, key will be if the engine actually stays on. Because if that fuel valve has to be on, which I think it does, and it's, it's really hard to see. But I've been in this kind of plane before. This is a new plane to me, but the Cessnas aren't. The 172s are very similar to the 152, which is smaller. Uh, and this is called an aerobat, which I assume means it's a more aerobatic. But what the hell? I mean, I mean, it could just be marketing. All right, hold on. Let's check out the radios. Um, so this doesn't work. This third radio, though, the fourth, this only has three out of the four installed, I think. Navigation. Yeah, 
rotation re receivers. Oh, the transponder should be set to on. I don't know what that does. Microphones, okay. That's a bearing indicator, fine. RPM. Uh, might need this because it's cold up there. Uh, Pito heat, airflow, it doesn't matter. Now, tuner calibration. I'm just checking this out where everything is because the first time I've actually, what's it that? Okay, this is heading, that's your heading. But this plane I don't believe has an autopilot, which is what I was looking for there. I don't think any of these things. Audio signal of Margaret. See, I don't understand what some of these controls are. But if, the, if there was an autopilot, it'd be kind of up there. Which is fine, because we ne we were almost never use it. All right, let's go for the first flight in this particular aeroplane. I don't really care which we're going to play Chicago, but it's Hotel. also, this airport is new to me, the, the model, the, the enhanced model, so we're going to do a little airport present too, see if we can appreciate that, and then we're going to also maybe see if we can find an opening in the clouds. Okay, so for example, yeah, it's a little slow, but things like these cargo, empty cargo loaders are not, oh, these one just appeared, are not, uh, are not in the standard model. Um, and some of these buildings are enhanced. Oh, yeah, it wants us to go this way. Um, obviously, these are handsome buildings, but the really interesting part of Chicago here is not this part of it, obviously. This is the back, effectively the back of the, the behind the terminals. I'm not exactly sure where the actual heart of O'Hare is, but we're going to fly around it, so. Alright, wants us to head off. Obviously, this is a huge airport, so one can imagine, you know, we're going to be uh, taxiing for about a mile here. And there's a lot of air traffic, which is the, is the most one is the busiest airport in the nation, and, and one of the top ten in the world. Hold position, Exojet Seven Eight. But we are probably not going to hang around too long waiting for traffic. You know what I'm saying? We're we're very important. See, I think the rest of the airport's over that direction, so we're not even that close to where the airport is. Wisconsin Six Zero Three Zero. Yeah, that's traffic. just the back part of it. All right. Excuse me, sir. I'm important. You're just a fucking passenger. Wisconsin Say altitude encoder equipped. I guess that's so that people who are who are who see you on radar can tell exactly how, how what your altitude is, your current altitude, which is hard, I guess, with the radar. Interesting, but it's like 50s technology, I think. But uh, altitude encoder, okay. Was no, this thing an actual thing you can push buttons on? Yeah. Oh, it's, a, it's, it's an accelerator recording. Which, an accelerator recorder seems like a strange instru instrument to have, but on a plane that advertises that it could do robotics, it would have one. Getting close. We, we don't want to turn over. We're going kind of fast here. Roger, Exojet 783. Envoy 360. Hold position, caution, other traffic. And these little tires can't break you too much. But at least you won't flip over. Unless you're about. Hold yeah. position, UPS 983. You still don't want to be breaking and. Uh, Hold position, Envoy 360. They're not talking to us. 
so far. So that's good. Alright, let's break here. So it flaps to one third. Alright, two minutes an hour. Request to Tower Cessna Kilo Echo November Sierra Hotel at yeah, runway 28 right tower. ready for departure straight out departure. Runway 20, 20 hours right Cessna there. Kilo Echo November Sierra Hotel altimeter 29 decimal 85 wind three two four at 1 1. Caution the generic taking off runway 28 center. Straight that out departure. 328. Wow. Cleared for takeoff runway. Another one over right. there. Takeoff runway 28 right Cessna November Sierra. It looks Hotel. like it's late evening, but it's just cloudy. Just a heavy cloud cover. Alright. Accelerator max to the, to the max to the firewall. Seats down there, full throttle. Getting some speed going. Pull the nose back. That's what we look like taking off. Room zoom. And, uh, fixed, uh, landing gear, of course. Hey there, Sia, how you doing? Taking a new plane out, this plane out, this, uh, it's a Cessna 152. We've already had the 172, and this is kind of a baby version of that. It's a little smaller, some simpler, doesn't have autopilot. But the other thing was, is that I got this enhancement to the game that comes with airports, quote-unquote. So that's one part of the airport. That's just one part of it. And it's other part of it. Uh, every other part of the airport. Um, and one of the it comes with ten airports. So I've been trying to fly around these ten airports in the ten one of the new the ten planes I have flown before. So this is a as that's one picture now. It's advertised as an Aerobat. It says Aerobat on it. Yeah, he says Aerobat. Um, it says, um, so it comes with an accelerator, um, accel this accelerator gra accelerator graph, this thing that, that stores, um, records acceleration levels, uh, and a pretty powerful engine, but we haven't really tried doing any major, uh, well, you sure get a lot of, uh, you get a decent amount of, that's what it would look like, the amount of number of planes at O'Hare, but the main thing is, is that it's, these are new models for this building here that has these glass surfaces, and that's the main terminal right there, the new terminal, I guess it's pretty new. But yeah, it's, I kind of wanted to see what the new model looks like, uh, or what you get for the, for the advanced things, because you're kind of paying for it. It's pretty. Um, I think at night, if the actual night wanted to be lit up, but this is only 4 p.m. during the, at, in the thing. I mean, they have the runway lights on because it's cloudy. Yeah, well, I, I just think that's just part of it. There, there's that part of the bit, and then there's the old airport, which is over there. So there's kind of two airports that they merged into one. And then there's this terminal here, which I don't know if it's, it's like domestic only or something. This is like a new terminal. So it's, it's like so, it's like this main thing. And there's this satellite terminal here, right? The plane's coming in. And then there's this satellite. There's, I think there's a cargo section, which I usually over here. So cargo planes would take off and land here. And then, and then I think, or maybe not, it's over there. But then there's this whole other section. It's an immense airport. I mean, it's one of the big, top ten most busy airports of the world. The world. And, uh, and you know, it's got, it's, these, it's got this, this is a triple landing. This runway 28, there's actually three runways there. Well, there's two to the right and one to the left, but they're all the same, they're all parallel. So I think this is probably where the old terminal was. And then there's the new terminal, or the new terminal, and then the other satellite terminal. So yeah, I mean, you wouldn't want to like go to O'Hare and not kind of know what you know what your carrier is, you know where you're supposed to go. Follow signs carefully, so you're in the right part of the airport. Because there's a good chance you're not going to be in the right part of the airport. I get it. it's possible that one part of it is reserved is reserved for international flights because San Francisco is like that. But again, there's that whole section over there with millions of planes and that other satellite terminal, and on the other end side of the runway, it's actually between the runways. There's this large terminal and um, set of gates and a, a, a secondary um, a tower. This is just 
O'Hare. This is one airport. And I think these are probably, these look like cargo terminals because you see the trucks parked behind it. So this would be the cargo section here. And there's several cargo sections. That's an also a cargo offloading building that where trucks, where planes be offloaded and loaded onto trucks. Is that me? That's not me. Yeah, well, I mean, but every, you know, it's like a lot of people. But as I said, Chicago's a hub, so it's people coming in. Oh, where? Oh, Chicago's the other way. Where am I going? We're going to get some altitude and then we're going to kind of hit the city. I kind of want to see what our, what our, um, got plenty of fuel. Okay. If we run clean here. Let's get some altitude up here. Again, one thing this plane does not have is an autopilot, but that's okay. Our flights are not that long where that's going to kill you. Again, it's a new plane to me, so I'm trying to get used to the controls. You know, we can fly from here because we see our vertical speed. We have the artificial horizon. We have a compass. We have roll indicator, which is the little thing on the left. That's it. We have navigational system, which we haven't really programmed anything in. We see our speed currently 110, well, 105 knots. Yeah, something, some beacon is, is talking to us. But I'm just wondering whether that's nav related to navigation. Turning the markers beacon. I don't really know what some of these things do. I'd have to go into the manual to figure out what a markers beacon, how you set those, or whether it's part of the navigation system. Because I don't really see. This is an older plane that does not have the typical Garmin, um, and that usually means there is a navigation system. Let's, let's, let's look at the um, co-pilot co-pilot's area here. Okay, RPM, which is getting there, and the fuel load, I believe. Oh no, that's. Um, is that? I think that's uh, amp, amp, amp system. Where is the fuel? I mean, uh, you can always see it from here. I can see it's, it's 46 percent. But in the realistic plane, okay, you're right, it's down here. Oil pressure, oil temperature, green, and then the fuel quantities, left and right. Tanks, which are in the wings. Okay, all right. But we still want to build up some altitude here. Hotel, now let's start. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tower Cessna Kilo Echo November Sierra Hotel frequency change. We're still in the vicinity of O'Hare Airport. Some trim. Okay. All right. We gotta be looking at our mixture because it's probably we're probably flooding the engine and it's inefficient. But it is a fixed prop engine, unlike the 172s, where you're also gonna want to uh, change the propeller pitch. This one, you just want to just the uh, mixture as you get higher. reach where the typical operating range of the engine is. We're still pushing the throttle pretty hard. We want to climb here. And we are heavy fuel. I don't know if we get up above these clouds though. You can still see we're kind of below the cloud uh, bottoms. I'll see. Because we do want to get up enough altitude where we can try some aerobatic maneuvers, which you typically don't really want to try, but I don't know if they know what you're doing. 
because there's a recovery period. You can maintain a thousand feet per minute. Sun trying to peek through. Oh, yeah, it's not a suit. Might, in fact, fly over the cloud tops by about 7,000 feet. But yeah, I'm not sure what this plane means by aerobatic, because I can tell you in advance, it's it's not an aerobatic plane like this the planes I specifically have that are made for aerobatics. I imagine this it's supposed to be real time weather, and I heard it is it's supposed it is kind of been raining in, in, in the northeast it's that time of year. Well, there's supposed to be a storm in Maine, and I might try flying um, yeah, oh, on Thanksgiving, and I might try flying around there to we'll see if we can fly there through a storm, actual storm. Because. Uh, Especially in these little planes, they get they get they get beat up about you know in the storms. Okay, we're gonna move set the mixture. Where's our uh, we're almost gonna break out of the Break out of clouds and be in actual sun sunlight shortly. Just don't want to stall. Uh, and yeah, you can tell these planes, um, you know, they're propeller planes and they need thick air. You know, thicker air to to uh, get a lot of you know power. Whereas jet engines are the other way around. They don't develop much power at the ground, and then once they get going at higher altitudes. And you can really tell that it's fun that they model that, both these planes, they, they definitely start running out of the will to, to climb at about six or 7,000 feet, unless it's an engine that's just specifically designed with a supercharger or a turbocharger to, uh, to work at high levels. And this one is not. I don't think it's a turbo, it's a turboprop or it has a turbocharger. It's basically a piston engine. And yeah, it just doesn't want to go up any further than about, what, 6,000? See if we can get it to 7,000 feet. But you see, there's some cloud breaks down there, and we're going to... We are going to try to do a couple of basic aerobatic maneuvers, which we should be able to do at about 6,000, you know, without worrying about uh, um, stalling. Causing, you know, without... Uh, that we can't recover from. So yeah, you can't really see, really see it, but the city of Chicago is right down there. It is 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 under the cloud cover at this moment. It's, it's right by Mixfield. Sorry, so we're going to come back. We're kind of heading east towards uh, the um, towards the actual lake, Lake Michigan. But we're not over yet because Mixfield is on the end of it. All right, well, we could do some basic maneuvers, like maneuver number one. 
let's see. In fact, yeah, cleared up just enough so we can see downtown. It's kind of cool. All right, maneuver room one, a roll. Okay, no slightly down. Good speed. Keep your keep pressure on one side. Because these planes tend to yeah, tend to want to corkscrew away. But if you're kind of patient with them, they'll come back because they don't really roll that fast. Because it's a right roll. Yeah, because normally I like to stay, you know, and check out and check out what's on the ground. All right, we're gonna do a left roll from from here. Yeah, kind of. It really, yeah, it really wants to nose down. But we did generally keep the same direction, which is good. All right. So now the next roll, the aerobatic maneuver that I'm pretty sure we should be able to do is an Edelman, which is a half loop followed by a roll at the top, or a half roll at the top. So we need to get a good speed for that, about as much as we can get. So I want to want to get right up to about 140. Right up to 130, 140. Doesn't matter about altitude because we're going to get way like that. Okay, and then pull back on the stick pretty hard. And then right over there, well, okay, we did a full loop and then it did the same thing as other planes do, which is right at the bottom of the loop it wants to lose control. Mainly because I think it thinks it's stalling, but it really should. Yeah, it's the same problem. They call these planes aerobatic, but most aerobatic maneuvers can't be done in, in the model. At least not this flight model. Without without a problem. Let's see if we we try let's see, get some out get some speed going. Okay, I'm gonna pull back. Yeah, I'm not doing anything interesting there. It should just be able to pull smoothly back. But yeah, you can see how it twists and starts rolling even without me doing anything. Yeah, all the planes do that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's just that it just they won't roll. You can you can or they won't loop. You can roll all day. And even doing a a, a short roll, it's more like trying to do a half the Immelman half roll, is really hard. It, uh, because okay, see, an Immelman is half roll, half loop, followed by roll. But you really need a jet plane to do that. These kind of planes can't do that. Say, uh, that's Meeks Field right, right down there, and that's the city of Chicago, which we'll, we'll check out. So I wouldn't, I mean, yeah, obviously you're getting some good G's there. Uh, I'm not sure what that meter is going to record. Um, and the plane's not falling apart, and that's what makes it aerobatic. You know, kind of strut, that strut. Um, uh, 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 bracing reinforcement for the wings. I guess it's a nice plane, but it's a Cessna. It's not really going to let your. It's not going to light anything on fire. And as I say, you wouldn't want to fly long flights in any kind of plane that doesn't have a uh, autopilot. I mean, or even short flights. You know, what I mean, I believe this one doesn't, or at least it didn't have it. I mean, it might, you know, many of these planes have been retrofitted with Garmin's and autopilots, but a lot of these planes you can't because they have mechanical systems to. Um, to control the wing surfaces. You can't really automate that. Now, I just want to remind anyone who's watching that if you hit these buildings, it, it is the end of your game. I mean, you don't die if there's no explosion. They'll just put up a box saying you, you collided with something. Um, so, doing this is a lot harder than it looks because, I, you know, you really, I don't want to end the game. I don't really want to collide. And this is the famous river. What is it? Michigan River? But yeah, being aerobatic is, is good for being able to pull G's and be able to do a lot of close runs in these buildings. Um, so we'll do a few of those. It's the Chicago River. And then there's like, there's up here with fun things to do. And then it looks like actually a pretty fun one. I mean, it's got, it's got the ferries to wherever, Cleveland, whatever. And then uh, there's another kind of big, I don't know what that is. And there's a, a LNG transport ship. Nice. But yeah, flying low is really, to me, what the whole simulation is about. So I don't really... Get I mean, I, there's a couple times when I get on a new plane and I, or aircraft, 
And I'm like, well, what's the service ceiling? You know? But they're not very interesting strings. It's just backfiring. But I do like to find out. Uh, you know, it's just the first time I've taken a plane up, I just kind of want to see what we can do in terms of how, how does it add. So it used to, the Hancock Tower used to be the tallest building in uh, out you know in the western in the west you know, outside of New York for a long time. But now the Sears Tower is taller now, but they're still not really tall. Can't really, yeah, in this direction you can't see them too well. But we're gonna fly right back to Han, uh, right by the Hancock Tower here. You see that the distinctive X bracing. Yeah, Chicago, man. I mean, let's let's let's, let's leave that. Let's leave Chicago with the Eskimo man. What kind of weather do they have down there? All right, let's just see how, how uh, stupid we can get here. It's an aerobatic plane. Well, that's not good. Oh, that's definitely not good. All right, we're doing good. It's just, it's just not good. No. Well, no, I fucked up. You see what happened? See what happened? Right when I was going to end the stream, right end the, the Microsoft Flight Simulator segment, I like to prove to people that, yeah, you, you, yeah, you, when you're canyon running in a, in a city, this is what happens. You collide, you collide with an object, in this case, a large skyscraper. Millions of people are dead. Well, people are dead, theoretically. And uh, the cops will be here shortly. No, it, it, it's fine because I'm 39 minutes in, which means it's actually time to end today's uh, flight, simulator seg flight simulator segment, which we tried a new plane and it, we just checked out a new airport. We didn't get to land it, but I think we would have had no problem landing it. And as always, my formula is to spread the love uh, first with the flight simulator segment that we do a short break uh, and I set up for the uh, music segment. Today, the music segment will be guitar featuring this guitar here, give me a few minutes to set up. It's a beauty. I haven't played it in a while, in my opinion. Just the one that counts. Uh, and uh, I have 16. Yeah, I have 16, and most of them are pretty damn nice, I think. This is really one of them. I, I always say that. I, I'll, all my guitars, but... Anyway, give me about five minutes. We're going to play guitar, and then remember, tomorrow is going to... At the music segment, we're going to move... They're going to remote, effectively, to the other side of the room. So it's gonna be like an IRL remote segment. Trust me, it'll be it'll be weird and different. Although we might be doing that more, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, that was fun to check out that new airplane. Tomorrow's airplane will probably be one of the diamonds. We have a diamond DA40 TDI and a diamond DV20. The diamonds are lovely aircraft. For, I have at least I have one. I have one of those anyway. It's a variation. Um, we've already done the, the Dreamliner, and the next one offers a Cessna Citation long, Longitude, which is a, also a variation of the of the, of the Citation that I, I do a Citation that I do have. But then there's the Cirrus SR22 and this Pip, Pipistrel Virus. Believe it or not, they have a plane called the Virus. All right, so there's a bunch more planes we're going to try, um, but uh, on subsequent days, it's going to like five more days of content will be to, to the rest of the plane, uh, untried aircraft, and then we'll go back to the tried aircraft. Okay, give me five minutes and uh, we'll do some guitar. It'll be fun. See you then.
Welcome back to today's stream, Tuesday stream. It's been like a hundred streams now. They're all about the same. Well, I like the consistency, you know? Anyway, it's the stuff I would be doing every day anyway. Today's guitar, I always like to talk about the guitar a little bit before I play it too much. It's just a lovely, lovely, lovely thing here. A lovely thing um, my Paul Reed Smith made in the U.S., uh, not an S1 or S2 or something like that, CE24. Now, Paul Reed Smith guitars go up to $10,000. They're just, they're, they're. Um, you know, uh, each and, uh, you know, they're wild. They're just wild. They, they're all, and, you know, many of them are one of a kind. He started making this guy named Paul Reed Smith. He started making guitars in the seventies when he was like 18. So he's not, he's barely, he, I think he's roughly my age now. And he still makes, you know, he still runs the company and he sees his, the guitars. And people know these guitars are very famous. One of the most things is just kind of the general shape of the guitar. And the other is what we call the bird inlays, which are, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, the cheaper guitars, you don't have them. And the mid-range guitars, this is kind of this flat Apollone color. It's, it's, a, it's kind of cool. And, uh, and in the um, high-range guitars, it's crushed Apollone, which is much more colorful. Like my other guitar that has the crush, crushed Apollone inlays. My white guitar. The thing about there is the tension to quality applies to everything going the wood it's not veneer it's an actual piece of wood that looks this amazing you can get this 3d effect when you kind of move it around that i'm not it's not going to come out in the camera but you, you see it the back is is, is gorgeous and, and the attention to detail on all the fittings and that these pickups are you can't buy them they're made you know if, they, if it, one of them ever breaks which they never do they'll send you a new one or you know what I mean? but you can't purchase them for your own guitar you know they'll make them for you and they're very powerful. And uh, so this model is different than many of the less expensive ones. It's not that expensive because um, it has a bolt on neck, which saves a lot of money in the production of the guitar. And that's not typical of, of a most of the PRS guitars. But those are out of my price range. This is kind of my price range. And it is a PRS. It is made in the U.S. And it does sound amazing. 24 frets, you know, if you care. Obviously, phase shift in
I forgot to change my category a few days ago. I'm always doing that. Successfully. Music. So again, a short programming note. Today's stream, I'll be playing the guitar for a bit more. Tomorrow's stream will be in the music studio behind me, below my Twitch glitch uh, sign there. Um, I don't have any idea what we'll do there, but just being there and checking things out will be a start, and we'll just see where it goes. Um, day after that, it's going to be another guitar stream. Day after that, it's going to be Christmas music on the uh, in Ken's Lounge. Just That's a Friday. Friday will be Christmas music in Ken's Lounge. should be fun. Oh, by the way, Thursday is uh, a typical f streaming day for me, by the way. I believe. Even though it's Thanksgiving. We'll see. No, I'm staying home. Couldn't drag me out. There's no temptations in the world. I can't already have taken care of right here. So I hope you're streaming the entire time. I already took my vacations from work, okay? So let me put it this way. I get Thursday off, but I don't have Friday off. I took my vacations. I went to Hawaii for a week, and then I went to, just went to Vegas for a week. And that's it. So I'm not taking more vacation time. Um, yeah, I hear that. Anyway, I'm, and I'm always happy not to travel around Thanksgiving anyway. But I mean, if I most of my family, if I had them, would have been less than a 50 mile drive away. But I'm not going away for this year. Not going anywhere this year uh, for Christmas either. So just going to, you know, next year will be a, a different story maybe. But maybe. Yeah, well, it's nice actually. Trust me. But yeah, I've been to plenty of Christmas, plenty of Thanksgiving meals in my lifetime. I, you know what I mean? I've been to, you know, roughly, you know, sixty, I imagine. So, it gets to be kind of like a yeah, food, people, drink, buy. But maybe taking a few years off is is a good thing. You know, I'll appreciate it more next time I do do it.
Well, the 49ers are my local team. They're come there. They might, they're, they're kind of doing okay this year. Brock Purdy, good, good quarterback. Most years, I'm not a big fan. This year, uh, I'm a 49ers fan. Why not? Yeah, he was. He, they didn't have really high hopes for him, but turned out to be a good guy.
couple songs I want to do today at least. All right. We'll need this. Check, check the tune. Check the tune. That's the tune. Not good. It's actually funny. Give me a blanket, keep me warm, and let me wear your coat. better than the time I did two days ago. I saw, hey, I got nowhere to go but up, frankly, each time. Because uh, that was, yeah, oof, rough. Rough. It's not going to sing me from doing it again. not going to stop me. Finally, I figured out it took a long, long time And now there's a turning back Maybe cause I'm dying There's been times I'm so confused 
Are my roads when they lead to you? Are it the turn? Walk away. It's hard to sit when it is I see in you. And it I'll always be with you. Words can't say, I can do. Love to brew, it's all for you. I thought I'd seen it all. Cause it's been a long, long time. I'm a tripping for wondering if I'm blind. There's been times I'm so confused. All on the roads when they lead to you I just can't turn and walk away It's hard to say what it is I see in you Wondering if I'll always be with you Words can't say and I can't do Enough to prove it's all for you Rain keeps pouring down Falling from blue skies Words without a sound Coming from your eyes I may have figured out but it took a long, long time And now there's a turnabout Maybe it couldn't your hand There's been times I'm so confused All of my roads with a lead to you I just can't turn and walk away It's hard to say what it is I see in you And I hit my love way with you, words can't say, and I can't choose not to prove it's all for you. It's hard to say what it is I see in you, and I will always be with you. Words can't say, I can't do not to prove it's all for you. I've done that one a few times. And the other one we do occasionally before the front before the end of today's stream at least. If you want Hold to on. Do that. I switch this over here. Press a few magic buttons here. Skip the end there. Turn the audio on there. Alright, ready. Hold on a second here. Hold on, we're going to pause this and go back. I'm going to sing it too. I'm going to sing it too. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I got to learn how this... I got I to practice the song. I mean, listen, not practice the song. Listen to the song. So it's easy to play. The guitar part. The sing part. Oh, right. 
never be So, oh, we come along to the moment of the stream, which I dread having to say. <laughs> no, I don't, because I do have to get back to work. It's a regular work day for me. As you know, I take my streams on basically a one and a half hour break from work. Uh, although this week probably be a pretty light week. So I, I'm, I'm not really too concerned about the, the you know, trying to make up the extra time or anything like that. Basically, I'm charging the company for this time. Uh, but you know, hey, I'm I'm here. I'm hey. If, if a mail came in, I had to respond to it. I'd cancel my stream and say, yeah, I gotta go. Gotta work. You know, and nothing came. Nothing's gonna come in. It's not gonna happen. Never happens. But could happen. See what I'm saying? Could happen. And I could be the only guy who could fix the problem. Whatever the, the theoretical not happening problem is. No, it's happened. Well, occasionally, once a year or two, I'm the guy, only guy who can fix the problem. Not very often. And then, because that's not my job to fix problems. My problem is I'm just supposed to develop the software. You know what I mean? Somebody else is, eh, let's, not, let's not talk about that. Anyway, okay, it's getting ever closer to tomorrow's exciting stream of, which would be around the same time, probably 1 p.m. my time, uh, Pacific time. Uh, uh, playing the flight simulator, untried plane, not sure which one, maybe that diamond, maybe maybe the Cirrus, maybe this pip pistol. Doesn't sound like fun, but hey, I'm going to try them all. Flying somewhere, and uh, then then the recording stream or studios the tour end, 
demonstration stream, I guess we'll call it. You know, actually, it has a piano there, so I could do my lounge piano act from there, um, which we'll have to see how that goes. But that's going to be tomorrow stream. Uh, so spread the word in your town, your local town. Call the reporters. Uh, they contact the president of the, of the United uh, Nations um, or not. And uh, just, but you know, it, it should be fun. Whoever happens to be here, I'm doing it for myself. It should be fun for me, pretty much. So thank you for for listening to me play and sing a little bit on my PRS CE24. And uh, I enjoyed it. It was nice. Again, I like to I like to play my guitar once a day anyway. So, uh, of course, well, yeah, that's, it's, uh, yeah, well, I, have to, I pay you to say that. So yeah. here it comes. Oh, there, it's the air horn, air guy. I got it. So I got to go by. <laughs> See you next time. It was he was about to. It's going to get really loud here too. I'd have to go. I'd have to go muted anyway. Just, 